people, David Steele, Lord Steele, led the Liberal Party from 1976 until 1988. He joins me now for his first interview about the Cyril Smith allegations. Just picking up on that last interview there, do you think your office was too casual about this? The, the alternative press put the questions and your press officer said all he seems to have done is spanked a few bare bottoms. Well, <clears throat> let's be clear, it wasn't my office. This obviously came from the, the party press office. Um, I don't remember it at all. But uh, the fact is that in 1979, the first thing I knew about this was the to read Private Eye. And the opening sentence of the Private Eye report was this, and I've got it in front of me, that there is not an important newspaper or TV station in the land which has not received a copy of the May issue of the Rochdale Alternative paper describing some unusual behaviour on the part of Cyril Smith. Now, that was uh, o- therefore known to everybody, including me, any investigative journalist, any member of the public, and that was all I knew. So, well, Nick Clegg said the Whip's office in my party went and spoke to every single member of the House of Lords, he was speaking recently, and current members of the House of Commons who were around at the time of Cyril Smith and said, did you know anything? No one said they did, but you did in fact know. No, all I knew was what was in, in private eye. Uh, as I say, any member of the public uh, could could know that. Um, in, 19, in 2012, uh, after the Labour MP raised this in the House of Commons, I understand there were some inquiries. I don't think I was included in that. I don't remember being asked about it. But anyway, the, the private eye story was public knowledge, and I was part of the public. And when you read that, you challenged Cyril Smith about it. What was said in that conversation? Absolutely, yes. I said to him, look, what's all this in, in private eye? Now, he said, yes, the report is true. The private eye story went on to say the police had investigated and no further action had been taken. You have to remember, and, and it's interesting, the phrase was used by one of your um, uh, interviewees a moment ago, that, that this was a different era. Uh, corporal punishment was permitted. It would be totally illegal now. There'd be, it, there'd be no question to be up for assault now. But in those days, it went on. Well, it went uh, on with school teachers. It didn't go on with a middle-aged MP going into residential schools no. for vulnerable no, ha- pupils. Ha- and hang, on, hang, on, hang on a minute, Martha. You're making a basic mistake there. He wasn't an MP. He was a local councillor. He had some supervisory role in these places, which I don't quite understand, but no doubt Roch well, okay, well, uh, uh, well, okay. He was he was a councillor. He wasn't a yeah. teacher, was he? No, he was but, he was he was a he was a local politician. Yeah. and he was going into residential schools for vulnerable te- teenagers and spanking. Even in the 1960s and 70s, didn't that strike you as a bit odd? Of course it did, but but then uh, everybody who read Private Eye thought it was a bit odd. I mean, what happened to the Daily Mail investigative journalist? Did they inquire into it? The fact is, he wasn't. These were allegations that were ten to fifteen years old. Since then, and after the closure of one of the institutions, he'd gone on to be elected mayor of the town. He was awarded the MBE by the Labour Party for services to local government. I had no locus in the matter at all. He wasn't even a member of my party at the time. No, but he wa- when the allegations were made public, he was a member of your party and, you, and, that's after, why, after, and that's why I questioned him about it. You questioned him about it. Did you take the matter any further? No, why should I? I mean, there was, he was not, there was no allegation about his behaviour as an MP. There are now allegations which have come to light since his death, uh, including the one you, you played a moment ago. And these are very serious, but they were not known to us at the time. But are you saying what, what he did before he became a Liberal MP didn't matter? No, I didn't say it didn't matter. What I'm saying is that the reports said it had been properly investigated by the police and no action had been taken. Now, one of the things that should come out now is why was no action taken? I think that's a legitimate a public interest question, but it's not a question for the Liberal Democrats. It's a question for the police. Did you take the did you you said you didn't take the matter any further? You didn't think about asking the police about it at the time or the no. local party to try no. and find out any more about it? No, I had no locus in the matter at all. They were ancient allegations about his time as a local councillor, nothing to do with his life as an MP. And anything that's happened since then, which has emerged since then, was not known to me or to anybody else. David Alton told Channel 4's dispatches last year that you made facetious remarks at the time. You said this is no different from what happens in public schools around the country. Well, you say it's a facetious remark, but it also happens to be true that in those days corporal punishment was permitted. And, and the accusation in the private eye version of the report was, was simply that he was administering corporal punishment to these boys, which he should not have been doing, I quite agree. 
Did you turn a blind eye to this? Because even though there may not have been enough evidence to prosecute, that didn't mean that Cyril Smith was innocent of the allegations, did it? It just meant that they decided that not to prosecute. Well, exactly. And it was, it, as I say, it was some 10 or 15 years old. He wasn't even a member of my party at the time. So I had no locus in the matter at all. But MPs f at, from the time, Michael Medicroft for one, say that there were certainly whispers about him during that period. Ah, now this, that's another matter. Of course, once the report was out in 1979, there was the usual gossip and tittle-tattle around the Commons. Interestingly enough, John Biffin, the late John Biffin, in his diaries records at exactly the same time that he had heard something about Cyril Smith. Everybody who read Private Eye had heard something about Cyril Smith, but nobody knew anything else, and there were no rumours swirling around as the Daily Mail suggests in the House of Commons about his activities as an MP. That's the key point. But when there was this gossip swirling around, as leader of the party, didn't you think it was worth investigating or at least taking further? Isn't there a point at which lack of curiosity becomes negligence? Hang on, hang on a minute. We're, we're a political party, not a detective agency, and, and idle gossip is not a, a basis for any inquiry at all. Uh, and my basic point is that not a single story emerged, not even a rumour emerged about him misbehaving as an MP. If that had happened, of course we would have inquired. Des Wilson, the former party president, says you had your head in the sand. No, I just read the same report that he and everybody else would have read. We just heard claims that he abused a teenager in the House of Commons in 1979 when you were leader. Do you not regret now the fact that you didn't take more action on this? If I'd had the slightest inkling that that was going on, of course I would have taken action. But I repeat over and over again, these were old allegations, publicly acknowledged, which the police had investigated. But even knowing about those allegations, you still decided to recommend him for a knighthood? Well, you know, people could say, oh, Margaret Thatcher recommended Jimmy Sell for a knighthood. And, you know, it is monstrous to suggest that, that was done for political reasons. In, in the case of Cyril Smith, he had been the distinguished MP for the area for 15 years. He'd announced he wasn't, he wasn't standing again. He was in poor health. His life expectancy was unknown. Many MPs got knighthoods at 14 and 15 years, and, and I was perfectly happy with that. Of course, if I'd had the slightest inkling that there was anything wrong in his behaviour, it would not have happened. Looking back, do you think he should have been prosecuted? It sounds as though he should have been, yes. And certainly, if, it, if, if these things happened today, he would undoubtedly be prosecuted. But, you know, a man is innocent till proved guilty, and I hope that these current inquiries will actually lead to some conclusion. And I think the the victims uh, who are, who who we've already recorded, I think they deserve to have the, their questions answered. David Steele, thank you for joining us.